Here we have an Intel Xeon 8180 2.5 GHz, 28 core processor that came in for repair. And the processor looks something like this. That's one big processor. And uh, let me show you what's going on. Look at this. We have two missing components, or one missing component, and the other one is knocked off. Now this we can solder back, but this one here, we need to figure out the value of that cap. Maybe we can remove one of those caps, and we can measure. But before we remove the cap and measure, why not secure this one first, so we do not lose it. I did not measure it yet. Maybe I can measure it off circuit, and see what that value is in case we get a similar processor in the future we know what the value of that resistor is meter and resistance mode and I do not want to lose that component the component looks like it's stuck from here I do not want to push too hard because it may fly to the ninth dimension and we're not going to be able to find it anymore if I know the value then it's no problem And the value of this one is 220 ohms. Perfect. Now, if we lose it, I do not care because we can grab another one. 220 ohms. And if I forgot, I'll go back to the video and I'll know. Now, I did not apply any leaded solder. We're just going to use the same solder that's on the board. It's only one component, no problem. But look at this. You can see how much heat it's going to take to readjust that component. It's going to take a lot of heat. I mean, that's a monster of a CPU. It's not a joke. Maybe I can use my hot tweezers to quickly readjust. Apply some flux. Because flux is your friend. See? You know what, I think I will feel a lot better if we redo the joints. Even though I thought that we can use the same joints, the same unleaded solder joints, but we do not have enough solder on the board. If you want to do a job, do it right. Not that what I was doing was wrong, but this one here gives me peace of mind. And I'm using an F dot mini solder pen. If you're a hobbyist or in the same type of business, you can purchase the pen off our site along with all the other tools that we sell. Everything from soldering stations, hot air stations, thermal cameras, power supply, voltage injection tool, SMD component books, original MTEC flux, everything. Just add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. I keep mentioning this to all new viewers on the channel.
See, it's a lot easier working with lattice solder. A lot easier. The component is good. Okay, we're gonna clean up more later. So that's a good initial cleanup. The component is soldered in place. And we measured what, 220 ohms? Let me see what readings we get if we measure it in circuit. Same, 220 ohms. So this component is not connecting in parallel with the one next to it. We still have 220 ohms. This information you only get on this channel. Who's gonna tell you that this component is not connected in parallel on the Intel Zion 8180 28 core 2.5 GHz processor? It's not gonna happen. Now, what is the value of that cap? Are those caps connected in parallel? I have no idea. What we can do is remove this one, get the value. I would assume that every single one of them is the same value. There's no reason why caps would have different values, especially if they are stacked like this. Resistors can be different values, but capacitors most likely, that's not the case. We're not gonna be able to ever find out, but we're gonna take a smart guess. I'm gonna remove that cap and we'll let that cap stand on one leg. Just like that. Can you stand on one leg for 20 minutes while chewing the gum? Let me go to my LCR meter. And we're going to measure the capacitance of that component. You see, I put the component on one leg so we do not lose it. We almost lost it. It didn't make a good connection because of unleaded solder. But anyway, I'm going to be careful. We have 1,167 or 76 nanofarads value. Great. Let me measure again. 1174 nanofarads. One more time. Yeah, 1174 nanofarads. So that should be around 1.17 microfarads. You know what, I have a donor CPU right next to me. I do not know if they use the same value caps or the same size caps, but let me grab one. That's an older, what, an older I don't know what that CPU is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let me measure this cap quickly. Oh, the same size. This one is reading 1,200. Just the tolerance, same size cap. I mean, same value. Is it the same size? Let me check. And it's the same size cap. Exactly the same size cap. Okay, so let's start by soldering this one here. But before we do, let me focus. That component is in place. 
Now we need to prep the other two pads. The cab is swimming. It's almost summertime and the cab is taking an early dive. The cab want to play games, we can play games too. But the difference is we play better. We're going to turn on the anti-glare light, which you can also find on our site. And we're going to apply hot air, reflow. That cap want to play games. Still, after all that talk, we still want to play games. But like I said, he's not going to win. It's like that person who runs away from the cops. He drives 200 miles an hour and he thinks he's going to get away. After 3, 4 hours, 5 hours, 10 hours, he's going to get caught and he's going to go to jail. So why run? If you know you're going to get caught, why run? Like that guy, he's trying to escape and he knows that he's going to get caught. He's going to be put in place and back in jail. I don't know, I teach those cops lessons all day long and still, they disobey. I know you think I'm crazy talking to caps all day long, but that's what I do. That's my job. If I did not like my job, I would not be doing it. But the only difference, me in 2024 compared to 2012, 2013, is I work smarter. I do not like to waste time. I do not like to work on devices that will waste my time with low success rate or not knowing if I did spend the time if that device is gonna work or not. And that's why I pick and choose what to work on and what not to work on. Anything in the world is fixable if you wanna spend the time but as a business owner, you have to be smart. You have to know how to make money and you have to be smart about it. We have a person that sent us a Roku device, streaming device for repair. Are you kidding me? How much is that device? $30, $40, $50, $100? When we have something like that, we do open up the device and we look if it's something that we can fix in a timely manner, we do it. If not, then it's not worth it. We close it and we send it back to the customer. See? Better than factory, right? Awesome, we're done. We're gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video. And I know you cannot see a thing, but that's the CPU.